In this video, we're going to be talking about the ROS launch system. At this point, you've already gotten a taste for running multiple ROS nodes at the same time. And you might have already gotten a glimpse of just how many nodes it can take to start up a useful robot. Individually starting up and configuring all the nodes necessary to run a robot would be a difficult task. And that's why ROS has the launch system for letting us configure and launch multiple nodes with one command. ROS launch works by letting us write files that lay out exactly which nodes we want to run and how we want to configure them. And then we can use one command that reads that file and runs all of those nodes for us. Let's get some practice using ROS launch by writing a launch file that will start up our talker and listener nodes together. To do this, let's open up a terminal. Go ahead and source both our ROS setup file and our workspace setup file. And then we can ROS CD into our RG training package. Launch files need to live within a launch directory in our package, so let's go ahead and create that directory. We'll run the make dir command and give it the name launch. And then we can go ahead and change into that directory. Here we can go ahead and create a file called conversation.launch. Now launch files are just XML files with a root tag called launch. So we'll go ahead and create that root tag give us some space and then close it. And each node that we want to launch is represented by a node tag. So we're going to add two node tags, one to create our talker node and one to create our listener node. To start, we'll open up a new node tag and we need to give each node tag three required attributes, the name, the package, and the type for the node. The name for our first one will be talker, the package will be RJ training, and the type will be talker node. And then we can close that tag. Now we can create a second node tag for our listener. We'll give it the name listener, the package RJ training, and the type listener node. And we can close that tag. Now by default, any node that you start with a launch file will send all of its console output to a log file and it won't print it out onto the screen. We want to be able to see the output that our listener node is sending, so we need to tell the ROS launch system to send its output to the screen terminal. To do that, we add another attribute for that node. The attribute's name is output, and we want to set the value to screen. Our talker node doesn't send anything out to the console, so it doesn't matter if we specify the output attribute or not for that node. That's all that's required for our conversation launch file. So we can save and close this file. And now that that file exists, we can run it from anywhere using the ROS launch command. To do so, we're gonna type ROS launch. We need to tell it the name of the package that specifies the launch file, in this case, rj underscore training, and then the name of the launch file itself, conversation.launch. When we run this, We'll get a little bit of output from ROS launch, letting us know what it's setting up, and then we'll see all the hellos being printed out by our listener node. Seeing these hellos tells us that both nodes are running, because the listener node wouldn't be printing anything out if the talker node wasn't running, and the talker node doesn't print anything out, so we wouldn't see anything here. So now we've got a file that lets us use one command to start up both nodes. There's another feature of ROS launch that I just took advantage of there that you might not have noticed. See, ROS launch will automatically start the ROS master for us if it doesn't find it running when it loads up. We can tell that this happened because we see these lines print out where it explains that it's auto starting a new master for us and giving us the details there. This is really handy because now you don't have to worry about starting up ROS core on your own, but it comes with a little bit of a catch. See, while ROS launch will start the ROS master automatically for us, when we kill that launch file, it will also shut down the ROS master. This is fine if you're only using one launch file because the ROS master will survive just as long as the ROS launch command is running. But if you're using multiple launch files, this can cause problems because whichever launch file happened to start ROS master will also shut it down when it ends, leaving nodes launched by other launch files with no master to communicate with. So if you're in a situation where you're only running one launch file to boot everything up, then you can go ahead and rely on this auto start feature. But if you're using multiple launch files to start up your robot, you're gonna wanna go ahead and leave an independent instance of ROS core running in the background so that you don't have to remember which ROS launch instance is also holding the master instance. There are many other attributes and tags that we could add to our launch file. We just covered the bare basics in this video. If you'd like to read through all the rest of the details and the other things ROS Launch can do, I'd highly recommend checking out the ROS Launch page on the ROS Wiki.
But that's it for this video. We've looked at how ROS Launch can let us start and configure multiple nodes at the same time, and save us a lot of effort in the process. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at the ROS Parameter Server, and how it can help us configure nodes in a more dynamic way.